Leslie, thank you so much for joining us here at the PLSA Investment Conference. A fascinating debate there about DB and all its issues. The task force have put together a report. What are their latest recommendations? Well, it's a very interesting report uh, and they've tried to come up with some concrete proposals in terms of how you might achieve a form of consolidation in the DB sector, which is, which is good that people are putting con concrete proposals on the table. They explore the types of consolidation that we're more typically used to talking about, pooling of assets, sharing of administration. But then they go on to look at the idea of super funds, uh, whereby employers could effectively discharge their responsibilities by payment of a fee and transfer of their scheme into a super fund. It would also mean standardisation of benefits for the members, and obviously this could only be done with appropriate safeguards, the trustees agree in consultation, etc. From my perspective as the regulators, uh, as, as the chief executive of the regulator, um, the question for me is how does this help us with the particular challenge we face of the most stressed schemes in the DB sector? The proposal suggests that schemes would have to be funded to a 90% level in order to go into a super fund. Um, I'm not sure that the most stressed schemes would be able to get to that level uh, just with standardisation of benefits. So could be quite challenging, Does it re would it really help us with that particular problem? And how big is that particular problem? Well, we believe that there are a few hundred schemes that would fall into that, that particular category of stress schemes. We don't believe that the D D DB sector is, uh, has a systemic problem in the sense of they're going, there being a pile-up of schemes queuing up to go into the PPF and the PPF not being able to help. We don't see that and we've, we've stated that quite clearly and that's the view the government takes in its recent green paper as well. So why would consolidation help just to a layman? Why would that be a good way forward? Well there are various arguments for it but obviously uh, cost saving is one. Uh, that's, that's why for example uh, many of the local authorities have been pooling their assets. So that's clearly one. But the um, argument from the DB task force that, whose report we were looking at today is that um, it can also increase the chance of the members of DB schemes receiving their full benefits. It's really important to understand, of course, that everyone who's in a DB scheme is protected by the underpin, the safety net of the Pension Protection Fund. So what we're talking about here is the difference, whether people get the difference between full benefits and the Pension Protection Fund level. That, that's essentially what we're talking about here. And that's what this DB task force has been trying to look at. So if we're talking about schemes going into, say, a super fund, mm -hmm. how does that happen? Who makes the first move and, and what's the incentive? Well, you heard in the debate probably that's a really interesting challenge. Um, we as the regulator what would have to be certain that these super funds were well organised, well run, financially secure, uh, set up to last for the long term and not likely to collapse into the PPF themselves in short order. And that is particularly challenge, challenging at the start-up point because you've got to have fate, effectively have a critical mass to make a super fund commercially viable. And do you think there is an appetite? Are you feeling that from the industry? That's a good question. Um, I think it depends who you define as the industry here. I think there could be something of an appetite amongst employers, uh, but whether there's an appetite amongst trustees or members, I think remains to be seen. From what you just said there, is there a, a slight distrust amongst members, if you like, of any change when the promises that they were made, some were made 40 years ago about what their pensions would be? I think it's a good point. I mean, we have to understand that DB pensions were provided to people as part of an overall remuneration package and were a really, really important part of that package. And as you say, they're relying on them for their retirement. So not surprisingly, as the regulator who is specifically charged with protecting members' benefits, we would only uh, want to consider things that uh, would in some way reduce those member benefits in the most extreme of circumstances when there really is no other alternative. So um, I do think that's why, not surprisingly, when issues about reducing benefits are um, discussed, then members do think, hang on a minute, you know, is that the right thing? And actually, it might be the only thing for some of these schemes because they're in such dire straits. There are certain circumstances where it is right for the employer and the trustee working together to attempt to restructure the scheme. Um, it, and that may, in some cases, hopefully not too many, involve a change in the member benefits um, because that is the only way uh, of ensuring that they, that they get... Um, uh, perhaps better than they would uh, benefits than they would other have got otherwise have got from the PPF safety net. Yeah.
so if some of these recommendations were to happen, how well received do you think they would be by the DC sector, who are perhaps the millennials or my generation who have been putting into private pensions because they were told that pensions wouldn't be what they should be by the time they retired, and they now see the DB schemes being bolstered. What do you think they will think about that? Well, there have been a lot of debates about the whole issue of fairness between sectors, fairness between generations. From my perspective as the regulator, my role is to ensure that the people who are members of the different types of scheme receive appropriate protection, whether they're in a DB scheme, a DC scheme, a public sector scheme, or, for example, in a master trust. Um, So we absolutely recognise as the regulator that we have to, for example, tailor our regulatory approach to the particular risks in the DC sector or the DB sector. Trustees have to think about the different approach that they need to take and the the challenges in communicating with their members. I think the the debate about intergenerational fairness or intersector fairness is perhaps one for the wider uh, audience. My particular focus on the regulator is making sure that the risks in uh, each sector are well managed. And the safety nets are in place. And that the appropriate safeguards are in place, yes. So how, in light of all of this, Leslie, how positive do you feel about what's going to happen in the next 10 years for those people who are retiring and they're perhaps members of some of these trickier, more stressed schemes? Well, what I can assure you is that we as the regulator will work closely with the schemes who are stressed. Some of them undoubtedly will struggle and may end up in the Pension Protection Fund, but that that is why it is there. Uh, Ten years ago, it didn't exist. So I think it's a huge progress that it it is there and it will continue to exist. It is well run, well funded, well managed, uh, and it will continue to provide that critical safety net. There will be then be a number of schemes where we can work with the employer and with the trustee to restructure the scheme perhaps uh, and there may be a compromise in the benefits occasionally but equally well we will be robust with those employers where they think we think they can pay more to ensure the appropriate funding of their scheme and we certainly won't let them walk away from their liabilities. Leslie, thank you so much for joining us. Good to hear your thoughts. Thank you.